Hi, John Valvano here. In this video, we're going to do local variables. Uh, you remember global variables had permanent allocation and public scope, meaning global variables can be accessed anywhere. But a local variable is going to have temporary allocation and private scope. And to define a local variable, we're going to do it inside a brace, inside a function. So if I add a variable here, okay, just like globals, it has two components. It has its type, uh, which tells you uh, what kind of variable it is. Again, another unsigned integer, 32 bits. And then it's got a name. And just like uh, global variables, the choice of that name goes a long way to help you understand the code. Uh, but what's different about local variables uh, is they're not automatically initialized. So if I just write this code here, uh, Delta will have garbage in it. Uh, and so therefore, we must initialize all local variables. Uh, and we can do that explicitly uh, by writing code that initializes it okay and so delta in my case is going to be a hundred steps um, and again we have to manually initialize it um, and the scope of this variable is anywhere in these braces anywhere in here this variable is accessible so it's private. It, no one else can get at it. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I could put, I could have put a variable in here. I could have put a variable in here. Um, and another local variable in here. And if I were to put a local variable in this spot, it's, scope or it's the places it could be accessible are within just this brace. And so it would not be accessible down here. Uh, and so we would not be able to see, uh, we would not just be able to see another local. Again, the fundamental rule is you want to reduce the scope as much as possible. Okay. Uh, and I don't need it. So I'm going to get rid of this one and get rid of that one. Okay. But I am going to use it here. Okay. Um, and because I wanted to initialize it once and use it inside the loop, I had to define it there. All right. Um, yeah, let's, uh, again, I got my board plugged in. Uh, we're going to build and we're going to debug. Okay. Now, remember, uh, we could see global variables in the expressions window. Uh, and uh, there's a couple of ways to visualize local variables, and that is um, we could uh, open up the variables window and see if the compiler is going to let us use it. Because it's temporary, uh, this is a hit or miss uh, operation. So let's step over. Okay, step over. Okay, you can see Delta was created with garbage information. Okay, that's some stupid number that doesn't mean anything. But then when I execute the next line, you can see Delta has been initialized to 100. Okay. And we step over, we step over. Again, what's happening here is the, is the time is being incremented. Okay. The other way to, um, to see the local variables, and since this is uh, an embedded system class with, um, you know, where we teach you assembly language, uh, if we looked at the disassembly of this program, we could try very hard to figure out where, uh, you know, where, the local variable went. Okay, so add s. Okay, that's my delta. Okay. And right here, okay, uh, we can see there's the number 100. And R13, as you know, is the stack. And so in this particular compiler implementation, it placed the local variable t uh, delta on the stack. Okay. And again, when it wants to read the local variable, to read the value of delta, it will then read from the stack. And when we get to chapter six, uh, we're going to show you how to do this in assembly. So in summary, a local variable is defined within a function after a brace, and it is temporarily allocated. In this case, it was on the stack and private scope. And the scope of this variable is only within the brace that it, uh, for where, where it exists.
All right. Have fun.